Now I'd like to um, welcome Dr. Dimitri Lerner. Dr. Lerner is a gynecologic oncologist and a surgeon, and he's going to talk about the latest developments for ovarian cancer. And that's your forward button. All right, thank you for organizing and inviting me to speak here, and thank you all for coming. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is the surgical treatment of ovarian cancer and uh, the changing paradigm in the surgery arena and b basically go through the studies that led us to believe what we now believe is the goal of every ovarian cancer surgery, which is optimal tumor site reduction, meaning removing as much of the cancer at the time of surgery as possible. So you'll be happy to know that our numbers correlate exactly between Dr. Chen's slides and my slides. So <laughs> <laughs> we're getting our data from the same source. So. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the, some other risk factors. So uh, there's baseline risk uh, in the general population of ovarian cancer is 1.4%. Uh, but having a relative, one relative first degree relative or two first degree or uh, two first degree relatives with ovarian cancer, even if uh, those uh, uh, people are not uh, BRCA positive, still increases your risk for having ovarian cancer quite significantly from the baseline. Of course, having a mutation in one of the two known genes that carry significant risk for ovarian cancer, such as BRCA1 or BR BRCA2, increases it even higher. Uh, the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are responsible for only 10% of ovarian cancers. The majority of them are of ovarian cancers are still sporadic, meaning that they just occur. And as Dr. Chen has mentioned, um, the oral contraceptive pill can significantly increase, decrease, excuse me, the risk of developing ovarian cancer. So 15 years of use decreases the risk by 50%, and that risk carries over up to 10 years. So it's another benefit of birth control pill other than birth control. Uh, staging of ovarian cancer. Staging uh, is surgical, uh, meaning we don't really know what the stage is until after the surgery. But most of the time, 70% of these present at advanced stage, meaning that the uh, cancer has spread to the abdominal cavity. Um, and as you can see, stage one is rare to find. Uh, it's confined to the ovaries. Stage two is confined to the pelvis. And stage three and four is the most common stage that we see. So what can we do to influence prognosis? Uh, obviously, the holy grail is the early detection. And unfortunately, so far, we haven't. Uh, there are some, a lot of studies going on that are promising, but nothing has come up yet that can be offered to the general pub public for early detection of ovarian cancer. Uh, but what we, once the diagnosis is established, there are several things that we can do to alter the prognosis of the disease, and one of them is uh, complete surgical staging and optimal cytoreduction. So the theoretic benefits of cytoreduction, meaning improving the bulk, uh, uh, removing the bulk of the disease. Uh, that uh, improves the bowel function, decreases abdominal discomfort, also improves uh, delivery of chemotherapy, and shifts the tumor fraction to the growing tumor cells, which would be more responsive to chemotherapy. So this, uh, the work on, uh, cyto, uh, on uh, the goals of ovarian cancer surgery has been going on for quite a number of years. And uh, this study was published in 2002. They looked at almost 7,000 patients from uh, 80 different centers and uh, evaluated what percentage of these cohorts underwent an optimal site reduction and what effect that had on survival. And uh, what they noticed that the cohort of patients that had a um, maximal cytoreduction surgery lived uh, longer. So they, they separated their cohorts into uh, two, different, uh, two different groups. Those that achieved less than 
percent cytal reduction per center and those that achieve greater than 75 percent cytal reduction per center. And uh, patients that were treated at these high volume centers or uh, more ex centers with more experience treating ovarian cancer surgery did better. Uh, this is another study that shows a significant uh, improved <coughs> survival in patients who had no residual disease. The black solid line is uh, patients who had no residual disease uh, after their ovarian cancer uh, debulking surgery. And the lines below it are patients who had one centimeter greater than one centimeter residual disease. And you can see that the overall survival is uh, greatly improved for patients who had no residual disease. And all these patients uh, were at the same stage at the time of diagnosis and received the same or equivalent chemotherapies. Uh, so uh, the, the paradigm has changed in ovarian uh, cancer that the goal of, uh, the goal of surgery became optimal site reduction, meaning removal, uh, removing m all of the disease at the time of surgery. And just by doing that, just by shifting the goal of the surgery, there has been a uh, dramatic improvement in the overall, uh, in the survival of patients with uh, cancer. Okay. So what are some of the uh, impediments uh, to optimal site reductive surgery? And uh, basically the location of tumors. There are some places in the abdomen where it's very difficult to achieve uh, safely uh, a good result. And usually it's uh, if the tumor is located in the upper abdomen, near the liver, near the portum hepatis, uh, at the base of the mesentery, which, is, uh, the bl uh, which supplies the bowel with blood because the resection of that area is impossible to be done safely without causing very significant um, morbidity. Uh, I just wanted to share with you also our uh, uh, cytoreductive outcomes at the uh, Cypress uh, Women's Cancer Treatment Center. This is a cohort of our patients who treated 87 patients from 2006 to 2010. Uh, and uh, we were able to achieve optimal site reduction in 90% uh, of the patients, which compares very favorably to other high volume centers in the country. Um, I uh, also wanted to uh, talk with you about another study that was recently completed in Europe. Uh, and uh, this is the study that looked at uh, primary surgery versus neoadjuvant chemotherapy, meaning doing the surgery up front or giving chemotherapy and then uh, uh, doing a debulking surgery after uh, chemotherapy. This study was done in Europe. It was a randomized study, uh, meaning people were randomized to the chemotherapy arm or to the uh, debulking surgery arm. And there are some interesting results. There are a lot of, pro uh, there are a lot of uh, criticisms of this study. Uh, basic, uh, main criticisms were that the study was done in, uh, in Europe, uh, their patient population was a little bit different, it was done in a lot of centers and some of the centers were low volume centers where they saw only one or four patients for the duration of the study. But uh, anyway, it was randomized and the result is that uh, the survival wasn't different uh, between the uh, patients who received chemotherapy first versus the patients who received surgery first, and then uh, chemotherapy. Which uh, raises some interesting questions, and we use the results of this study to offer uh, some patients who are not good candidates for surgery, uh, for whom they who are older and who we don't feel will be able to tolerate a big surgery, to offer them chemotherapy first and then offer them surgery. Uh, because uh, surgery after uh, chemotherapy uh, can be a, uh, can be less uh, morbid. <coughs> uh, so treatment options for recurrent ovarian cancer. Um, 
And uh, mainly what I want to focus on is uh, the surgical option for recurrent ovarian cancer, or what we call secondary uh, cytor reduction. So uh, there, uh, for a certain patients who have recurred after the first line uh, chemotherapy, um, there's a certain uh, pool of patients who can benefit from um, secondary cytor reductions. These are usually uh, patients who had a long disease-free interval for uh, what we call platinum sensitive, meaning that they, their disease-free uh, interval was at least greater than six months, but uh, it's even preferably that it's greater than 12 months, who have uh, good performance status uh, and who are, whose uh, disease uh, site of recurrence is isolated. These are uh, traditionally uh, patients that benefit from the um, secondary cytoreductive uh, surgery. And uh, contrary to that, uh, poor candidates are patients who recur on first-line treatment or shortly after uh, first-line uh, pre uh, treatment, who have extensive disease, ascites, uh, and platinum-resistant disease. So conclusion. Uh, optimal side reduction is still the strongest independent predictor of overall survival and should remain the goal of every surgical effort. Uh, optimal side reduction is a factor of both the tumor biology uh, and surgical effort. And neoadjuvant chemotherapy may be uh, considered for certain patients instead of optimal side reduction, uh, instead of primary side reduction. All right, thank you.